David Rudabaugh came into the world in July 1854, taking his first breath in Fulton County, Illinois. Nevertheless, his family's footsteps led them to Eureka, Kansas in 1870, altering the course of his early years. The path of his life meandered through Greenwood County, Kansas, before steering him westward along the cattle trail, ultimately reaching the landscapes of Colorado. His existence remains veiled in mystery until he became a participant in the infamous Outlaw Trail. Dubbed Unclean Dave, due to his infrequent encounters with soap and his preference for wearing grimy attire, he rose to infamy during the 1870s as the leader of a band of thieves and cattle rustlers situated in Texas. However, Rudabaugh's illicit pursuits were not confined solely to the boundaries of the Lone Star State. In a significant turn of events, he and his gang perpetrated a robbery at a construction camp of the Santa Fe Railroad in Kansas during the November of 1877. The repercussions of this act prompted Wyatt Earp to be commissioned as an acting United States Deputy Marshal, empowering him to relentlessly pursue the outlaw beyond state lines. Wyatt Earp undertook a journey spanning 400 miles, doggedly tracking Rudabaugh's traces to Fort Griffin, Texas. His quest led him to Shancy's Saloon, an establishment owned by John Shancy. Here, he inquired about the whereabouts of Rudabaugh. Shancy relayed that Rudabaugh had indeed graced the saloon with his presence earlier in the week, yet his next destination remained an enigma. The threat of information directed Wyatt Earp's attention to Doc Holliday, a man who had shared a round of cards with Rudabaugh. Wyatt approached this lead with caution, cognizant of Holliday's well-established aversion towards law enforcement officers. To his astonishment, when Wyatt finally encountered Holliday that evening at Shancy's, he was met with an unexpected receptivity to dialogue. Defying his earlier reservations, Doc told Wyatt that he thought that Rudabaugh had backtrailed to Kansas. This first meeting between Earp and Holliday would form their lifetime friendship. Wyatt wired this information to Bat Masterson, and the news was instrumental in apprehending Rudabaugh. Trying to stay one step ahead of Wyatt, Rudabaugh had in fact returned to Kansas, but would rob yet another train before being caught. On January 27, 1878, Rudabaugh and five other men unsuccessfully attempted to hold up a train in Kinsley, Kansas. He and his accomplice, Edgar West, were caught within days by Sheriff Bat Masterson and his posse, which included John Joshua Webb. When Rudabaugh went for his gun, Webb stopped him and forced him to surrender. The other four accomplices were arrested later. Rudabaugh then informed on his cohorts and promised to go straight. Rudabaugh's accomplices were sent to prison, but Dirty Dave was soon released drifting to New Mexico and returning to thievery once again. In 1879, he reunited with some of his acquaintances from Kansas. For the next six months, they terrorized Las Vegas, New Mexico, committing train and stagecoach robberies as the Dodge City Gang. The gang members included Mysterious Dave Mather, Joe Carson, Justice of the Peace Hyman Neal, a.k.a. Hoodoo Brown, and City Marshal John Joshua Webb, Rudabaugh's former enemy in Dodge City. While Rudabaugh, Jordan Webb, Katie, Nicholson, Pierce, and the rest committed acts of thievery. Neal, Mather, Carson, and Webb, in their official capacities, helped to cover the outlaws' tracks. On October 14, 1879, masked men robbed a train in the Las Vegas area. The robbers made off with $2,085, three pistols, and all the lanterns on the train. Two years later, when Rudabaugh was finally arrested, he would confess to participating in the robbery. On January 22, 1880, House... James West, John Dorsey, and William Randall were parading about town, sneering, laughing, and looking for trouble. When they entered the clothes in Patterson Variety Hall, Marshal Joe Carson asked them to check their guns, and they refused. A wild gunfight ensued, and Carson was killed immediately, while Deputy Mysterious Dave Mather killed Randall and dropped West. John Dorsey, though wounded, and House managed to escape. On February 5th, the Dodge City gang learned that Dorsey and House were hiding out at the home of Juan Antonio Dominguez in Buena Vista, 30 miles north of Las Vegas. A posse comprised of Webb, Dave Rudabaugh, and five other men surrounded the house and called for the men to surrender. Dorsey and House complied after assurance of protection from the citizens of Las Vegas was given. However, the assurance would be hollow, as within hours of the men being placed in the Old Town Jail, vigilantes relieved the jailers of the prisoners, Taking them to the windmill on the plaza to hang, the newly widowed Mrs. Carson opened fire on the men before the vigilantes had a chance to hang them. In the meantime, 
Rudabaugh and the rest of the gang continued to rob and rustle until Webb was arrested for the murder of Mike Kelleher on March 2, 1880. Despite his status as a city marshal, Webb was convicted of murder and sentenced to hang. A lynch mob formed but was held off by the Dodge City gang, with Dirty Dave at the helm. On April 30th, Rudabaugh and a man named John Allen burst through the sheriff's office to free Webb. Though the jailbreak was unsuccessful, Rudabaugh murdered jailer Antonio Lino in the process. Webb's sentence would later be appealed and commuted to life in prison. Escaping justice for the murder of the jailer, Rudabaugh and Dodge City gang member Tom Pickett fled to Fort Sumner and joined forces with Billy the Kid. According to some sources, Billy the Kid was afraid of only one man, and that man was Dave Rudabaugh. On November 30, 1880, Billy the Kid, David Anderson, and Rudabaugh rode into White Oaks, New Mexico, and ran into Deputy Sheriff James Redman. White Oaks citizens, already victims of thievery by Billy the Kid, had made it known they wouldn't tolerate the likes of Billy the Kid and his cohorts. Flaunting themselves, Rudabaugh took a shot at Deputy Sheriff Redman just for fun. Redman hid behind a saloon taking shots at the outlaws as several local citizens ran into the street, chasing the fugitives out of town. As a posse gave chase, the outlaws hid at the ranch of a man named Jim Greathouse, whom they held hostage. Accosted at dawn by a posse, they traded their hostage, Jim Greathouse, for Deputy Sheriff James Carlisle, who volunteered to negotiate with the outlaws in an attempt to give themselves up. Continuing to surround the house, the posse waited for hours. Around midnight, the posse called out that they were going to storm the house. Just then, a crash came through a window, and a man came tumbling out. Shots ripped through the air, and Carlisle lay dead. The bullet could have come from either the outlaws or the posse, but many suspect that the posse killed their own man. The posse abandoned the siege with this accident, and the outlaws escaped. Later, Billy the Kid would be blamed for killing Carlisle. Trailed by the resolute lawman Pat Garrett, Billy the Kid, Billy Wilson, Dave Rudabaugh, Tom O'Folliard, Charlie Bowdry, and Tom Pickett rode wearily into Fort Sumner, New Mexico on December 19, 1880, and were confronted by Garrett's posse, which had been hiding in an old post-hospital building. Lon Chambers and several others leaped from cover as Garrett ordered the outlaws to halt. However, several posse members didn't wait for the outlaws to respond to Garrett's demand. Instead, opening fire on Pickett and O'Folliard, who were riding in front. Pickett and O'Folliard were shot from their saddles, and Rudabaugh's horse caught a bullet and collapsed. Rudabaugh managed to jump onto Wilson's horse, and the other outlaws escaped, holing up in an abandoned cabin near Stinking Springs, New Mexico. Soon, the posse tracked the outlaws down to Stinking Springs and surrounded the hideout. Inside the cabin were Billy the Kid, Charlie Bowdry, Rudabaugh, Tom Pickett, and Billy Wilson. When Bowdry passed before an open window, he was shot in the chest. The siege continued until Rudabaugh finally waved a white flag the next day, and the bandits surrendered, on December 23, 1880. Rudabaugh was taken to Las Vegas to stand trial. In February 1881, he attempted to avoid being charged with a capital offense by pleading guilty to the Las Vegas train robbery in October 1879. However, his attempt was unsuccessful, and he was sentenced to hang for murder. He was then taken to the Las Vegas Old Town Jail to await his execution where Webb continued to serve his time. In the meantime, Billy the Kid was jailed in Lincoln, New Mexico, where he escaped on April 28, 1881. However, he was tracked down and killed by Pat Garrett on July 14, 1881. Rudabaugh, Webb, and two other men by the names of Thomas Duffy and Wilson tried unsuccessfully to shoot their way out of jail on September 19, 1881. Duffy was mortally wounded, and their attempt was unsuccessful. Two months later, Webb and Rudabaugh and five other men chipped a stone out of the jail wall and escaped from a 7 by 19s hole. Rudabaugh and Webb raced to Texas and then to Mexico, where Webb disappeared. Later Webb returned to Kansas, where he took the name Samuel King and worked as a teamster. He died of smallpox in 1882 in Arkansas. There are two stories as to what became of Rudabaugh, the most common of which are, on February 18, 1886. Rudabaugh was involved in a cantina card game in Peral, Chihuahua, Mexico, which broke up after accusations of cheating. Rudabaugh and a Mexican man faced off, and Rudabaugh shot him through the head. When another player drew and fired, Rudabaugh put a bullet into his heart. Unable to find his horse, 
Rudabaugh returned to the cantina, which was now in total darkness. On entering, Rudabaugh was jumped and decapitated. For the next several days, his killers were said to have paraded through town with his head on a pole. Another story tells that Rudabaugh finally left Mexico with a herd of cattle headed to Montana, where he lived a normal life, married, and fathered three daughters. This version says he later died an alcoholic in Oregon in 1928.